In this video, I walk on an abandoned railway bridge. I summit a very high mountain and I use AI to create an image. Today, we're in Whitefish Falls looking for the shores of Frood Lake. It's a cold November day and my first objective is to try to redeem myself after a visit here last winter. Whitefish Falls is also the name of this town, one of the gateways to Lake Huron. This is the abandoned railway bridge that I chose not to cross last winter. It was a little snow covered and there were no tracks in the snow to indicate it was safe, so I didn't risk it. This time around, I could get a good look and I was confident we'd be okay. Despite at least one loose tie, the bridge is still fairly sturdy, but it has no additional safety measures in place. It crosses the Whitefish River at this, the narrowest section. The river leads to the Bay of Islands on Lake Huron. This river was used to transport red and white pine logs from this area that would eventually find their way to Illinois to rebuild the city of Chicago after its horrendous fire of 1871 which destroyed over 17,000 buildings. But we're not here for the bridge or the falls. We're going to visit a lake about 1.6 kilometers or one mile away. So we're hiking an old railway bed just behind Lawson Quarry near Whitefish Falls. I've never been on this particular section of the trail. It takes us in behind uh, Willisville Mountain, which I've been on before a couple times. And it's actually quite nice back here. I wasn't really expecting this. Nice thing about this trail is it's not too busy. You see a lot of the white quartzite rock. Beautiful lakes, beautiful trees. Crisp November day, late afternoon, but we're doing good. When researching the history of the lake, I learned that its name may have been changed from Whitefish Lake to Frood Lake in 1888. And we're going to see if we can make it to Frood Lake and back before uh, it gets too dark. Kind of left this hike a little bit late in the day. Peaceful little trail though. It's fast becoming one of my favorites. And I'm certain that the Whitefish River First Nation would have had their own name for this lake long before that. I tried, but could not find the lake's original name. In the late 1800s, a prospector named Thomas Frude found some mineral deposits along the shore and staked some claims. All right, so welcome to Frude Lake. It's the little town of Willisville, which I featured earlier in another video. And this lake is beautiful. Frood worked for the Federal Department of Crown Lands and was responsible for surveying and staking many of the early mining claims in the Sudbury area. And he played an important role in the development of the nickel mining industry in the region. He also discovered and named the Frood Mine, which became one of the largest and most productive nickel copper mines in the world. By 1889, he had moved to the community of Wallace Mine, not far from here. There he spent the rest of his days farming and mining until his death in 1916. It's a beautiful lake. I can see why Frank Carmichael and other artists from the Group of Seven liked it here so much. Well that's it for today. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoyed the video.